four brothers. Saffan. Baga. Ande. And Ofla, bound by eternal purpose. a girl named Mo. Moore has learned to sleep under the hissing tubes and the ever-humming chambers. The pumping cylinders give her comfort, the drumming of a job well done. Nothing startles her more than silence. There is no rest for the apprentice. Moore has done so much around here, repaired and watched and built, but in this deathly silence, she is once more taunted by the one thing she will never be able to do. Their engineering can be studied and replicated, but their strength they selfishly keep. Despite all the wiring and the manufactured tubes, the engines are powered by physical force.
but the kind that no mere human could ever muster. Safan. He was always the weakest of the four. He is struggling to breathe. Even Mo can taste the stale air in her mouth. It seems the ventilation system isn't working properly, but nothing does without the engine. Without power, the observatory is not much use. like a punch to the chest. It is all four of them. They all broke at the same time. Failed at the same time. Something grave must have occurred. But what?
without the veil. The air is too toxic to breathe. And just as more feared, the vents have all shut. The poison is kept out, but so is the oxygen. Safan is slowly suffocating, and the other three may have it worse. It shows all three purifiers are down, as if more needed any confirmation beyond the spores in the air. This is on you, Safan, Mo grunts. Pray it is not too late for me to fix your mess. It died a long time ago, and now the spores are taking hold of whatever remains. A better fate than the fungus eating you alive.
not worry. I will fix your mess, and I will save our homes. Moore reassures herself. She knows the damage the spores are capable of. The fungus first poisoning the mind, then ever so slowly, consuming the body. How it will spoil the verdant soil and obscure the midday sun. Despite all of its dangers, 
more frequently inhales the poison. An occupational hazard, she calls it. A sacrifice others weren't willing to make. A few violent coughs, a few eerie apparitions, won't keep her from doing her job. After all, she is the bearer of the Omni-Switch. The island of Beva, once a bustling place, before the great exodus, now just a pile of broken things and abandoned ideas. The island hosts the purifiers guarding Safan's domain, and not much else anymore. The children used to all come here together. Miri, Moore, their friends, for the Seabury Jam, the Scarecrows and the Rides, and then the Exodus happened. berries fills her nostrils, or is it a scent lingering in her memories? estate. He should be inside, with the windows shut and doors locked. Moore's heart skips a beat. Either the fungus got to him, or he is somewhere out there, fiddling with the purifiers himself.
remembers every one of these masks. The people who once wore them. The lingering memories of people. In one way or another. Now gone. understood the appeal of bones to decorate a tourist attraction. It's authentic, her uncle would say, but he'd always dodge the question of whether the bones were from a whale or another large creature. Moore's uncle owned this place. He still somehow does. One ride was two coins, back when money still meant something. The machine looks intact. It is resting, waiting for a spark. Thank you. 
to take a deep breath. The air still tastes foul, but the acrid poison is mostly gone. Two more to go. 